हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज मनीष पॉल और आप देख रहे हैं तो मनीष पॉल पॉडकास्ट यार और आपको पता है और मुझे भी पता है कि हम बड़े एक्साइटेड होते हैं ये जानने के लिए और देखने के लिए कि सामने आज कुर्सी पे कौन गेस्ट होगा यार और आज जो गेस्ट है उसके लिए मैं बहुत एक्साइटेड हूँ बिकॉज ये सिर्फ एक गेस्ट नहीं है मेरी बहुत अच्छी दोस्त है एंड ऑल आई कैन से अबाउट हर इज ओह शी डांस लाइक ओह शी मूव लाइक आ लेडीज एंड जेरमैन लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस यू टू अ वेरी गुड लुकिंग गर्ल फैंटेस्टिक एक्टर एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू मी वन ऑफ द फाइनेस्ट डांसर्स आई हैव सीन एंड स्पेशली वेन आई सी हर लाइव ऑन स्टेज Please welcome Lore. <laughs> Literally the best hype man I have ever had. <laughs> Can you come everywhere with me? Absolutely. Please. Let's do Please. that. I Let's love make that. it a pact. I would love to go and introduce you. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> That would be genius. Yeah, I love it. Lauren, so good to see you after so I long. I know. I know. You know, you I've I've stayed more connected with you yeah. than anyone else cuz I moved back to the US which yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about in yeah. a second. Um but you kept calling me every time you would come over. We yeah. met in New York a couple yes. times. Like I Absolutely. love it. Absolutely. You know but you know that is more important and main sabko kehna chahta hu kya hota hai uh दूरिया फिजिकली बढ़ सकती हैं बट यार हम लोग आपस में टच में रहें तो कितना अच्छा लगता है यू नो एंड आई मेड शो दैट लॉरेन इन मी वी वर ऑलवेज इन टच एंड दैट्स व्हाई द मोमेंट आई गॉट टू नो दैट लॉरेन इज कमिंग टू मुंबई आई से You got to be here on that chair man Absolutely right. absolutely I have so many things to talk to you about you know number 1 Lauren the star <laughs> doing so many movies with big stars uh, doing music videos getting millions of views with one of the uh, biggest biggest artists uh, then on a reality show as a contestant then judge on a reality show everything going smooth fantastic and suddenly Lauren back to foreign <laughs> in a jiffy why why did this happen oh man where do you even start um There was something that happened, some realization that I had yeah. where I realized I had accomplished every single thing that I had ever wanted to accomplish. When I first fell in love with dance at 7 years old mm. uh and started acting, all of that, I had all these dreams, right? Like yeah. as kids, like we dream, we dream big. I dream yeah. bigger yeah. than you could even imagine. Because oh, okay. when I fell in love with the art at 7 years old, For some reason I felt like I needed to train so hard because one day I was going to be on the world stage. Mm. And I don't know how at 7 years old I knew that and here I'm ending up like on the world stage, but I did. And it, like somewhere in my 20s, like late in my 20s, I felt like I had accomplished every single thing I ever mm. sought out to do. Wow. I peaked a little too soon. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. 20. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even know what I wanted to do at 20. <laughs> I peaked a little too soon, but I I had accomplished everything I wanted to. Um I had a ton of opportunity coming in. Um I had great money coming in. Mm. I was famous all of a sudden yeah. all over India like if I didn't know people they all knew me. Yeah. Yet I wasn't happy. I had every single thing mm-hmm. that would be like the recipe of happiness. Like even like my my parents would teach me growing up like you work hard, you study hard, you train hard and then you get to this place and you'll be happy. And I had it all and I wasn't happy. It still like really chokes me up. Yeah. because it was this weird like thing in my head something like shifted and i go wait a second like that that doesn't make sense like i should be happy i have everything yeah. and then i i started realizing i was like wait a second i'm like grabbing on all these things that are external to make you happy the money the fame the opportunity the everything but i wasn't happy inside so i didn't know it's like i wasn't taught these things growing up that happiness isn't outside of you happiness is in here and i go oh my god i go who am i like who am i without all of this stuff and it was like the weirdest thing in the world because i knew instantly i had to let it go this is the one life that i know of i do believe in reincarnation that's not easy that's not easy letting go <laughs> no it was the most difficult thing in the world like my agency my managers my friends everyone no one could understand it um and it was also this like dichotomy of like uh i was growing in fame and the more i was going up in fame and opportunity the more i was spiraling down my god mm. and that was not good and you see it a lot 
Uh, unfortunately, you see people go through this mental, you know, stress, but they don't take themselves out of the situation and then bad things can really happen. And I was really afraid of that. I was like, you know what? It's the biggest risk in the world to let it, it all go. But I had so much like faith in myself as a person, as an artist, as my talent, everything that I know that if I let it go and I go work on myself and ask myself these hard questions and really, really dive in, which I'll get into in a second, that when I'm healthy again, when I feel good again, I have so much confidence and faith in myself that I'll come back again. My God, you know, but... Uh... Ah, you know, listening to you, um, I think I'm finding it so difficult because now suddenly if somebody tells me to let go of everything right. and just go, uh, it's not easy. Yeah. You know, and and uh, after that also coming back is even more difficult. So Lauren, if I, if I talk to you about the time you said, you know, you just left everything and you went. So right. uh, would you call it depression? Was it a time of depression or how would you like to uh, name it? Yeah, I would I would say the depression time was really when I was here in India. In India. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I really noticed um, I was always really great on set. Yeah. I was always the fun one. The We've easy had one. the oh. best times on uh, sets. I yeah. think Jalak de Klaja, what a time we've so had. So much fun. Yeah. And I'm the kind of person, an artist, I want to help and be a part of everything. Yeah. Like I will be the director's right hand girl. Yeah. I'll be the choreographer's right hand girl. I may even be the choreographer, yeah. like whatever it is. But, um, and usually like if I get booked on a movie, uh -huh. they would want me back for the sequel. Yeah. If I got booked on season one, they'd have to have me for season two. Like that. It was just always like, I'm always really focused on the job at hand, but also in my head, I'm going, let's make this into the next job as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. And I was always that girl. And then it came to a point where, you know, there were so many things that would happen on sets and stuff that I was trying to control that like, if I didn't get enough rehearsal time, if we didn't get enough this or that, I'd be like, no, but we need to do this. No, but just all these things yeah. that were just, it's out of your control. Um, and I don't know, it's just, I've had to let all of that go. Um, the depression was really here. I knew I needed to leave because I wanted acting school. Yeah. And I wanted therapy. And I didn't know how much the two of those went together, honestly. Mm -hmm. But they really did. So I moved to New York because it was a halfway between LA and India. Yeah. So I kept coming here every now and then yeah. to do some shoots and stuff. But day one in my acting class, <laughs> my poor teacher and the students there, I, I did my scene hmm. and my teacher stops me and she goes, honey, she goes, you're locked yeah. from head to toe. You are locked. And she goes, and it makes sense. You had to like navigate your life through LA by yourself. You had to navigate your life through India by yourself. Hmm. And I was muscling through everything. I was like just yeah. pushing to get everything done. And there was also a lot of things here in India that are far different from where I grew up. And so there'd be a lot of things that would weigh on me. And so instead of having that weigh on me, I just shut everything down. So if I would be home in the US for say Christmas or something, mm. I would be crying that entire 24 hour uh, flight on the way back, yeah. missing my family, like leaving everything Obviously. behind. And then I would get here and instantly I would touch ground and I go, I have a contract with a show or a movie for the I'm next three, four months, boom. Shut it down. Switch on, switch Shut off. It down. I think yes, we actors live on it. Yes. There is a there is a big switch on, switch off button. Right. You know, we're with family and we are with them and suddenly we come back to work and yeah. we're on work. But I mean, I could tell you probably so many people in the industry have this experience. Yeah, absolutely. Where you have these emotions, maybe you're going through a breakup. Same. Yeah. I don't stay with my family. My parents stay in Delhi. Right. They're not that far. But <laughs> still, you know, the moment I, I go to meet them, I'm all excited, happy. Suddenly when I have to come back, those couple of hours, you know, yes, I'm a little down. But yeah. the moment I touch ground, Mumbai, and I'm like, Whoop, okay, let's go. I know. And so suddenly it's like. Yeah. And you get in front of that camera and you just, you put it's on that yeah. mask, you put on that front. And I work so hard. I don't have that front anymore. Mm -hmm. I physically cannot put that mask on anymore. But Lauren, that's Which is great. Because we actors, yeah. we actors, you know, and I think everybody will agree with this, that at times we do wear a mask. You know? mm. The people we are inside our homes, mm -hmm. I think we are different. 
the moment Everyone. we step out, yeah, most of them. Not just no, not just not just actors. Uh, yeah, everybody. This is I see it with my family and friends too. Like you'll be different inside the house, and then you go out and you need to put on this amazing front. I'm like, yeah. if I'm in a bad mood now, like you're gonna see it, you're gonna see it, you're gonna see it. like everyone's everybody. gonna see it because that's real. Like that's it right I there. Think, I think that is something we are uh, missing in the society. Yes, uh, real that nice. realism. We call it reality, mm -hmm. but we are not living in one. Right. You know that that is a problem. But okay, if I talk about uh, your your journey, you know, you said suddenly you felt that emptiness, and you said right. I want to go. What was that something that triggered that thing on? Um. Well, it was a little bit of that realization yeah. that like I really sat with myself one night and I had, it was, it was almost like a mind bending moment yeah. in time where I was like, wait, this doesn't make sense. It was like the first time I had that thought that was like, wait a second, I have everything. Anyone from the outside like would be yeah. like, you were the most like lucky person in the world. That's what, that's what, because I see uh, a lot of people who come to, uh, Mumbai, yeah. you know, they come to work. Mm. They want to work in movies, music videos, reality shows. You were doing everything. 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 Even so much so that um, after I moved to New York, I came back for a shoot yeah. and I sat in my vanity and my longtime makeup artist, uh, who was a dear friend of mine, um, was telling me that my longtime stylist um, or costume designer, they were chatting about me uh, recently and she was like, wait, like, what were we just saying about you? Oh, yeah. We were saying Lauren's so stupid for leaving. And it just, it hit me so hard. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, I, I really, I had it in that moment. Everything came out. Poor woman, one day I'll apologize to her. <laughs> um, as I think she should to me too, because it was, it was this moment where I, I was like, what is it with you guys? Like, what is the money and the fame? Is that everything to you? And I get it. They loved me like dearly. And they just, everyone thought I was doing so well. I was at the top of my game. And I hear all the time because I left, other people have now come in and have, you know, uh, big careers and maybe even surpassed me. I don't care. I'm not in competition with anyone, nor have I ever been, except for when I'm actually in a dance competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the time Lauren is like, mm, bring it, it on. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that's a different story, yeah. but I, I don't care. I chose to leave. It took everything to leave everything behind. Yeah. And the kind of person I am, what, like for like six years, it was almost, be I was getting so much work that maybe other people weren't able to come up hmm. because everything was coming to me in the dance yeah. space. And so now other people have come up and have the opportunity to have yeah. big careers for themselves kind of person I am. I'm so happy for these people. Like it has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. um, but it was that moment where I was like, I was spiraling so far down. Yeah. And plus um, with the cultural barrier, uh, the language barrier, yeah. And just <laughs> the Indian way of like coming up and being like a photo, a photo, <laughs> which is never one photo. <laughs> yeah. Never, just, ever, ever. One photo like this, one photo like this and one selfie. <laughs> oh, I didn't like how I yeah. looked. And I'm like, oh, my I God. I to put the filter on. <laughs> oh, my God. But the crazy thing about it yeah. is like, say I went to the airport, yeah. I would have to wear my baseball cap. It's kind of still why yeah. I wear baseball caps yeah, to this you, day. You use I, a lot of baseball caps. I think I'm so used to it because for a while, for a long while, like many years, I'd wear my baseball cap so low because your peripheral vision, if you look out at the airport, maybe it's just one person that sees yeah. you. But the second they come up to you and ask for that one photo, then, this person sees yeah. that person, this person, and then you miss your flight. So I would have my earphones in and my baseball cap down. And so for a couple years, that little space that I would see on the ground was my comfort zone. Ah, That's that not was... a way to live. That's not a way to live. I am such a people person. I can talk to anybody like they're my best friend. I used to love to sit at airports, talk to the bartenders, mm. talk to literally everybody. Um, like no one's off limits, you know, to have a conversation with. And um, I stopped doing that for a long time. So then when I started having conversations with people, it's like I stopped talking for so long. I was stumbling on my own tongue. Right. It was very strange, yeah. very strange. So. It was just, um, it wasn't just one thing that was a catalyst. There was um, a couple of things that had happened around the same time that was like, okay, I think it's time to step away for a second. And I don't think I want to get too far into that because um, I think it may hurt some sentiments to but people that aren't here also, I want anymore. To ask that, did you feel any kind of uh, discrimination or uh, 
any kind of uh, uneasiness from any kind of people here which which forced you that no this is not what i'm here for no not really if anything it was just all brought on by me and mm. my energy at that time like okay. there were some relationships that i was yeah. starting to break and it made no sense cuz um they were people that like actually helped me get here and were supportive i also do think my way of being and talking i'm i am an american i'm very blunt like yeah. i rather you tell me the hard honest truth it may hurt me like yeah. to my core but at least i know where you stand yeah. at least i can go oh, okay. okay and yeah. then i can go back and i can work with that and let it go versus what was happening was what i was hearing in the morning the afternoon and the night were three totally different stories mm -hmm. so my brain was doing this mental gymnastics of like yeah, oh my god yeah. oh my god which one is it which it was none of these it was actually that thing uh, over there and that's just not who i am so it was a lot of these mental gymnastics things um but yeah it was just this like deep knowing also i saw um uh an interview with will smith Um I know he's going through mm. a little rough patch yeah. right now but he has been a huge inspiration in mine my entire life and this uh interview he was talking about the wild abandonment that he's getting back to and the just not caring and seeing it through his kids they just mm. don't care like they're not trying to protect anything mm. and I felt like in the media people were saying Lauren India's best dancer You can't measure talent like that. Like yeah. that's not a real thing. But they're putting this out there and let's say I did a performance and it was like one of the best performances I'd ever done. Now all of a sudden the next offer that would come in, I was like choking. I was like, "Wait, is it going to is it going to be better than that one?" Oh, mm, oh, oh no, yeah. I don't know if I could take it cuz I don't know if it'll outdo that and I was trying to like one up myself every time and I stopped just exploring and it's okay to fail. And that's what this yeah. interview I get chills yeah. every time I, I think about it cuz he goes, "You have to fail early, you have to fail often, and you have to fail forward." Mm. And I was like, "Ooh." Yeah. And I go, "Okay, I'm going to leave all this behind. I'm going to go to New York and start an acting school, mm. uh which almost feels like starting over again. Yeah. Not almost, it definitely was. <laughs> it definitely was. <laughs> definitely. Um which it was so funny going into those classes because yeah. I used to be really known. So so yeah, so that's what I wanted to yeah. ask you. People must be knowing you and suddenly they see you in the acting school. Well, they so, didn't know me anymore cuz oh. because I had like built up in the US from so you think you can dance. Yeah. But then I came here and I didn't turn back. Like yeah. there was so much happening and big things that like all of a sudden I built this up but this had gone down yeah. in the US. So yeah. um when I went to school they didn't care who I was. Oh. They didn't care about my credits. They didn't care that I'm wildly famous on the other side yeah. of the world. They did not care. They just saw a girl that was starting to open up all those chains and it got ugly in those classes. Like mm -hmm. you're supposed to, you know, as an yeah, actor like yeah, yeah. let it out. Absolutely. And so that whole first year was about getting to know yourself. Because mm -hmm. as you know as an actor, you can't play another character yeah. having your own inhibitions, your own, you know, um qualities about you. You have to kind of understand those let them go to be able to play very another true, role. Very true. So everything was just opening up opening up opening up and it was a two year program and i couldn't stay the second year the second year was about character development script analysis um and many more things and i was like no i just i just opened everything up now i need everything to drop out mm. so i left acting school in new york It was also very cold in New York. Yeah. <laughs> as you know. Okay. Going, <laughs> like I want to go. <laughs> yeah, it was like what is this life? <laughs> Why do you sing like or can't? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I mean living in Arizona, going to uh California, yeah. then India, then New York? No. <laughs> Didn't work. Um but I went back to LA and I actually had this spiritual awakening happen. Mm -hmm. I had this moment as is a little weird to talk about and some people no, I want to know this. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Some people may be like, "Oh, this is woo-woo type mm -hmm. of things," but I had this very out of body experience. Okay. Again, I'm going to preface this with this is maybe weird for some people. Uh -huh. I had this moment in this night I was taking a nap. I was on the floor and um I was like itching in my body and like something didn't feel right. And I was like, "What? Like what is this?" And all of a sudden, I felt like I got pulled in the middle of the room like from something mid in my back and it moved me like 
over on my hands and knees. And I see your face. This is weird. Yeah. And my face is being pushed into the ground so much that I think my nose is going to break. But I'm not in control of my body. It was very weird. All of the air gets sucked out of me. I go, <sighs> mm. Plus at this moment, it's almost like not having consciousness, like mm. meaning nothing was good, nothing was bad, nothing mm. was scary. I was just observing what was happening. Mm. And in my mind, I was like, am I, is this, is this how I'm gonna die? Cause all the air just got sucked out of me and I can't breathe and I'm not taking another breath in. My nose is being pushed into the ground. It feels like it's gonna break. And then all of a sudden I see something and the way in real life, like Lauren's real life story, how I was brought into the world. My mom was in labor. Everything was fine. Doctor left the, the room. All of a sudden, all the alarms go off. Mm. Doctor runs back in, looks at my mom with the fear of God in his eyes and says, you need to push now. I must have been dancing or something yeah. inside. <laughs> Maybe you were in a step and she was yeah. like coming up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the umbilical cord was wrapped around my throat oh, okay. and I was uh -huh. suffocating. Oh. And it was either me that was going to die or my mom that was going to die. And neither of us did. Uh, but the only thing that happened when I came out was I broke my nose. I have like a little like lift yeah. right here. So that's why... I'm there, I'm, my face is pushed into the ground. Like, I feel like my nose is gonna break. All the air sucked out of me. All of a sudden I see the womb and I realize this is how I was brought into this world. I'm re-experiencing my birth. Maybe yeah, you're, there's a new Lauren. I'm having Lauren. a rebirth moment, which I'd never heard of before. Yeah. And since then I've heard so many, Jay Shetty had a rebirth, so many people that I'm like, wait, wait, this, this lines up with what I went through. Oh my God, this is an actual real thing. Mm. And so all of a sudden, once I realized what was happening, I came to consciousness, almost like when you're born. Yeah. And I wanted to scream and cry so loud, but all the conditioning that I have, I was like, no, like I'm gonna wake up the entire city. So I just rolled up my spine one vertebrae at a time. And I stood up and I took my first ever steps. And I go, instantly I go, I was just reborn what weird Whoa. but then i felt like i had like baby skin like you know how mm. babies have like so like tender skin mm. that they can't go stand out in the sun because they're yeah. gonna get burned mm. so i was reborn and if you think about it from acting school i ripped everything open yeah. and i said i needed everything to drop out so all of a sudden i go oh my god this is the work this is not the path that i thought it was going to take but this is the path at hand right now and i at that moment knew when we're born you know we are blank slates you know um mm. wild and free and connected and then we take on what our parents think their traumas their fears what society tells you to do and not do what now i come to a different society here oh no lauren in india we don't do like this don't don't do like that so i stop being wild and free i start going oh okay i can do this i can't do that all this and i realized i needed to physically unwire and rewire my brain, let go of everything I've ever learned. And I had to relearn everything. So I actually, I lived in the Hollywood Hills for this time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people may notice I went off social media for 10, 11 months. Yeah. But why was that? That was this time. I, I couldn't put anything out. I didn't want to know what anyone had to think about anything that I was doing. I didn't want the reassurance from people. I didn't want the likes. I didn't want the comments. I didn't want anything. I went on a mission. If people think, oh, Lauren, you had so much work. You were like at the top of your game. Why'd you leave? This is why. It's, it was the most incredible thing. People, I would check in online, like in yeah. my DMs and people for the longest time were like, Lauren, where are you? You're not doing any work. And I'm like, oh, if you only knew, I'm doing the most important work of my entire life. Yeah. You know, but that is so important right now. I also feel that, you know, that the moment, let's say I go off air for, let's say a month also, suddenly people will walk up to me. What happened? You're not getting work or what? Right. You know, that is a problem. That is a problem. I think a lot of people are facing, not only actors, Suddenly, if one person one day says, okay, fine, I just want to take it easy for six months. Mm -hmm. They'll start talking, oh, he must not be getting work only. Right. You know, he must be having problems. Why? Why can't we take some time 
off for ourselves. It's so important. You can. Yeah. And you told me a little bit ago, you are doing that. And yeah. I'm so proud of you because a lot of people, they don't think that they can do that. And that was a lot of my stress and depression over here is I was seeing my parents get older. Yeah, I was seeing my nephews being born and I didn't even meet them yet. Like, mm. I'm just not there. And this is real life stuff. Like, wow. one day my parents won't be here. Like, is the work, is the money, is the fame all that, that important. important, you know? That we leave our parents right you know we stop giving time to them that's not good right yeah i need a sip <laughs> wow so i left social media for like mm. 10 11 months right and um it was like i worked with a therapist mm. um who actually lives in south africa uh, -huh. uh he was a first ad on a film that i shot in dubai one year and okay. we we're talking about something and mm. all of a sudden we got into this thing and i'm like this feels like therapy and i wanted a therapist so bad mm. and he goes well i also am like a life coach and i'm like mm. Perfect. Just those things yeah, that everyone falls into place. In place. Yeah. Yeah. And God bless this man for two or three times a week for months. We were on the phone for three hours, three to four hours at a time. And it, like he would really press on things like it was things that were fighting everything. I'm like, no, 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 no. Th this is how it is. And then finally, I started realizing I need to trust this man. So whatever he would say, even if it didn't sit right with me, I'm like, I'm going to let it sit in here. Give me some time to marinate with it. And then eventually two or three day days later, I go, OK, now I see what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And so, again, it was just letting go of everything. And it got it got scary at times because mm -hmm. I truthfully was unwiring and rewiring my brain and dropping everything out that I was relearning my relationship to myself, to a spoon, to what this means, to what that means, like literally everything in life. Yeah. And um, there was times where I felt like I was teetering on like insanity. And I was like, just hold on, girl, hold on, hold on. Like you will, you will come out of this. So I felt like I needed to leave social media because I was too in the thick of it, of like yeah. asking these really hard questions to myself yeah. that like Jim Carrey is a huge inspiration to oh, me. Oh, I love him. Right? I love him. And he's gone through similar things yeah. too, but he stays in the spotlight. And so sometimes when he's in these interviews and he, or even Kanye West, yeah. he's going through and asking himself yeah. these hard questions too. But when you're like forced to be in front of the camera and talk about it while you're still figuring it out, sometimes it could come off a little crazy. Yeah. So I really took myself off. Um, so it was two or three times a week with my therapist. Um, I had a couple great friends still do, um, that I would get off the phone with them, with my therapist and call them right away. We'd have two or three hours more chats. Yeah. Um, I had my headphones in 24 seven, listening to podcasts and books and everything, yeah. just finding all these things that, you know, yeah. we just work and work yeah. and work and work. You're not asking yourself these real questions. Mm. So I did all of that. And then um, I felt like how I started with that baby skin. Mm. I could feel myself progressing. I'm like, okay, now I'm in a middle school. Okay, now I'm in high school. Okay, now I've graduated. Now I can go back into the world. And uh, that's when I started coming back to do shoots. And uh, I did dance like a couple years yeah. ago and I did a holy song uh, just before the pandemic. And um, I was in front of all these reporters and I had lived in India for yeah. like six years, right? And still I've done hundreds of interviews and everyone always asks the same question. They go, how are you such a good dancer? When did you start learning how to dance? I was like, we're six years into this and these are still the only questions that we're Can talking. Can you imagine? Oh man, when I was seven years old and I said I need to train so hard because I need to be an inspiration in the world and mostly for, for girls all yeah. around the world, it's because I wanted to talk. I wanted yeah. to do this type of stuff. And I wasn't, we weren't talking, you know? And, and I, I was just like, no, there, there's more to this. So that's when I came back, I started opening up that I had, you know, experienced depression, that I was yeah. going through some of these things. I started speaking real talk, which... Mm -hmm is a little weird to people here still. Yeah. People don't really like talking about yeah. depression. It's still very taboo. But I noticed that when I was talking to a reporter and I'd speak truth, maybe they wouldn't resonate with my exact story, but it resonated with the truth inside of them. Yeah. And I saw the light bulbs in their eyes and they're like, oh, oh, it's kind of like this. And then- Suddenly somebody shows, shows you the mirror, let's say. Yeah. And they say, oh, okay. 
That is happening to me too. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, we're going back and forth now. And I'm like, now we're talking. Now we're actually talking. And that's the kind of person I am. I love to show my dance. I love to act. But like, I'm a real girl. Like, and we just weren't talking for so many years. So it was weird because I, I knew I needed to take myself out. I did for a couple of years and I was ready to go. And then the pandemic hit. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what? And the COVID was ready. Oh, Lauren is ready. Let's go. Yeah. And so it was funny because my team back home, they, yeah. were, they were like, Lauren, how crazy is this? That what you did over the last year and a half, you took yourself out and had to sit with yourself. Now the whole world's doing. Yeah. Everybody's sitting. Everyone. But still, people haven't realized. A lot of what people haven't. What you have realized in one and a half years. People, I think we've had two years of COVID and mm -hmm. still people haven't realized. You know, people think, oh, yeah, Kweni, we have to just get out. You know, I understand all that. But right. I think it was a great time for people to sit right. and introspect. Right. You know, but I feel that still a lot of people haven't done that. No, because it's very difficult yeah. to ask yourself real yeah, questions. It it's, it's probably the most difficult thing. It's a lot easier to just maintain and keep going in this, like, you know, repetitive nature because it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to unwire habits and break things down and True. actually change. It's mm -hmm. very hard. And I love change. I'm like, mm, bring it yeah. on. This change, <laughs> yeah. money change. <laughs> Any <it>? change. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay, Lauren, if I talk to you about, uh, you know, uh, Bollywood films, mm -hmm. what kind of films would you like to do? Let's say if you want to uh, get back to films and you just do this. What are the kind of films you're looking for? Um, I want to do something. It's so weird because you said Bollywood. But I'm going to relate to a Hollywood artist. Oh. Like a mm -hmm. Julia Roberts type ah, of film. Right. Like Pretty Woman. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Like wow. just that type of stuff. Okay. Um, I do still want to explore dance films because uh -huh. I feel like I've done a couple. Yeah. But not as like the main lead. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that would be really enjoyable and a challenge for me uh, with the language and everything. Um, I also am really interested in kind of writing and adapting my own life story. Oh, that will be great. Because, you that's know. That's going to be fantastic. We've seen uh, ABCD2. It was the Indian crew mm. that went uh, to America. Yeah. And there was that fish out of water thing. But my story is so wild. Like, if you are from India, you really don't know what happened in my yeah. early days. Which I had a full career there. Like, I yeah. danced in movies and TV shows and trained Tom Cruise and Tobey Maguire how to dance. Like, yeah. I did so much. Yeah. People in India don't know about. Mm. And if you're American, you really have no idea what I did yeah, here. Obviously. So mm. something to bridge the two worlds. Yeah. And then again, going back to wanting to be an inspiration, I think uh, the kind of through line in the story is what about the girl that had it all that like left it? Yeah, you know? absolutely. And so I'm uh, thinking about writing the book and uh, turning that into a screenplay. Um, and people keep asking me, like I met with a big director in Hollywood mm. recently and, and he was like, oh, you must make this a film. He goes, but what's the ending? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Because it's not written yet. Yeah. It's not written. I've now come back to India, you know, right now to do just a couple shows. I didn't expect it to feel this good. And everyone I meet, like with you and other people. No, but I see that change in the energy, that positivity, you know, that you're supercharged and yeah. you're looking, you're looking happy here. Yes. Yeah. We all, we all try and look happy here. Right. You are looking happy here. Right. Which is, which is so here. important. Yeah, I feel all... it like all the time. I feel, I knew when I was young, I was very special and I believe that we're yeah. all special, but I've just had a very strong connection to my, my child self. And for a while, just everything got so heavy on my chest. And it's like, now it's just like, Ooh, I feel like I'm vibrating so high and and whatnot. But um, I meet people over the last couple of days and they're telling me that when I came back to social media after that yeah. 10, 11 month break, they could instantly see that change. Yeah. And the weird thing I was- I also told you that. Yeah, yeah, you did too. <laughs> and the weird thing is, is that I started speaking a lot of positivity and my numbers tanked. Like people weren't liking the post, people yeah. weren't into it. And I was like, why is that? And I go, oh, I think so many people are hurting inside mm. that it, that mirror thing. It's really hard for them to see the positivity and, 
you know, they actually connected more in my younger days when I was in my early 20s, like hopping around at a bar, like yeah. drinking, like drunk, you know. I remember one one of my birthday parties, you know, we <laughs> danced so much and we went mad, yeah. wild. Wild. Like, oh, 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 the I was dance, wild. Like the pictures I have, all of us dancing in Craziest poses. <laughs> <laughs> Please share those photos. I will definitely send you the pictures. Oh my god! Crazy pictures we have. Yeah. But you know, I I feel that um, after you came back to the social media, yeah. the kind of reels you're making. Yeah. Lauren, I think mind blowing is the word. You know, Thank they're you. so good. And Monty sitting right here, he just told you also. He you know, did, yeah. And how he and he keeps sending it to me also. Uh -huh. I said, no, no, I follow her. And no, no, sir, but you must see this. Uh -huh. You know how amazingly she's done that. How she's, uh, you know, working on the camera. Everything is yeah. so good. You know, it's it's brilliant. So, it's just it felt like starting over again yeah. because we didn't do that. Like you know, reels is a very new thing, and yeah. so it was like, oh, now I have to um, learn how to work the camera and yeah. make these little clips and you know I'm not making money for a lot of them a lot of them are just out of the pure joy of yeah. and the love of it and my mom's like I don't know anyone that works harder for no money and I'm like <laughs> but I think you can see it it's that joy and I didn't you want look so happy doing it yeah, yeah. Oh, that's I, I, I didn't care and I was like no I'm I know what I'm doing deep down because uh, I never really felt like I was a choreographer for mm. many years I yeah. do now mm. um, but for many years I didn't because I I was always on these reality shows where it was other choreographers stuff for my early days you know working with choreographers and then you know now it's so interesting because i pick a song um i find an artist maybe they dance maybe yeah. they do karate maybe they play basketball like and it's like how do you mold that wow. together and then you find the the choreography to it quickly like yeah. every day i'm doing this like boom 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 yeah. and now i'm picking up the costumes and i'm finding the shoot location and i'm directing it and producing it i'm yeah. like i see what i'm doing and training myself to be the director and the producer that i want to be and so now i'm getting those big jobs where i'm choreographing and you know directing those as well it's it's like okay i i did this That's i trained so nice. for this you know suddenly i feel so good lauren because uh, while talking to you from where i started hmm. how lauren was going through the rough patch uh in fact to start with how lauren was doing so well suddenly the rough patch suddenly learning about her own self yeah. and getting back and how yeah you know and i feel that there are so many people who are going through these emotions you know they're they're facing same kind of time anything right. you want to tell them right now there are people who are feeling low in life and any any anything you would like to say to them yeah i mean i think a lot of my story is is kind of living proof to the fact that you know you can walk away from things uh to work on yourself and yeah. to experience your family and the other joys yeah. in life uh and then you can come back it is it is definitely possible i think i'm living proof of that <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah and as they say now if you can take care of your mind it's you can take most, care of everything it's the most important thing like i really encourage everyone if you're going through those mental um struggles and stuff remove yourself remove yeah. yourself because we hear too many stories of people not removing themselves mm. and then actually removing themselves from this yeah. world yeah. which is which is so sad at times you know so i think it's it's very important to realize that moment and take a break right take it easy right and everything will be fine everything will be <laughs> fine everything will be I Amazing. All right, Lauren. On a yes. on a on a lighter note, if yeah. I if I talk to you now, that you know, uh, so if when you come to India, mm -hmm. what what is the kind of food you really enjoy? My auntie's food. <laughs> <laughs> and what does your auntie? Eat? <laughs> so it's so funny because I used to have like the whole working machine here. Uh -huh. I had the house. I had the driver. I had the cook. I had the maid. Yeah. I had everything. Yeah, yeah. I don't have anything. Okay. I don't even have a bank card right now. <laughs> oh, okay. My bank card expired over the pandemic, so okay. I've applied for it, but like. I can't even get an Uber by myself right oh, now. Oh, I'm like, okay. hey, I'm, I'm going to ask you uh, after yeah, this. Yeah, hey, yeah, can you get an Uber? Please, <laughs> Uber book. And, yeah, yeah, okay. and it's the it's the honest thing because okay. I just, I'm not attached to anything anymore. Okay. Like whatever goes and comes, I'm so happy. Okay. Um, but I have this wonderful auntie friend of mine yeah. um, who just loves when I come and stay. And I, I had an emotional moment with her okay. a couple of weeks ago because I'm like, man, like I, I realize now why I feel so good 
being here. It's because I wake up to her beautiful smile. Oh, nice. I go to bed to her beautiful smile and my uncle too. Yeah. I don't want to exclude him. Yeah. Uh, there's just something about her. She's like this oracle. Like she's like something else. And she feeds me all day long. Mm -hmm. So Bindi masala is my favorite. Okay. Dal, dal makani. Um, okay. uh, she's vegetarian. So uh -huh. I've been learning to like vegetables. <laughs> okay, lovely. But you yeah. eat non-veg, right? I do, I okay, do. Okay, so the, again, uh, so one meal is planned. Mm -hmm. After when you're done, you have to come to my house. We're having a meal together. Done. You have to meet my family I also. Know. Yeah. Oh, your kids, when I see photos, yeah. I'm like, they're grown. <laughs> grown they're up grown. And grown. It's my daughter crazy. is almost come still here now that's she's wild. very tall yeah that's wild is her does her hair go up to here too <laughs> <laughs> no that's only me in the family oh got it yours is gonna keep growing yeah. as she gets taller you're like so no I'm, I'm like, the head of the uh, house uh, just uh, yeah, head of the house I have to end quite the lightly <laughs> quite figuratively <laughs> So Lauren, you've done a reality show uh, back there, you know, So You Think You Can Dance. You did a show here, Janak Dikhlaja, hey, which I hosted and we best. had a great, great time. So what, what difference do you find in the reality shows uh, there and here? Um, oh man. Okay, so <laughs> I'm so glad this just came to me. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because in America, yeah. they'll be live. Okay. You start at five o'clock, you end at seven o'clock. Okay. So, you know, Kat Dealey, the, the host of the show, she would pause for a commercial break. You would see in the back, you would see the the time come on a minute and a half. They'd cut for that commercial break. They'd come back in five, four, three, two. It was literally from five to 7 p.m., two hours tight. Everybody in that building needs to be on there. We a also have five game. to 7 p.m., five in the morning to 7 a.m. in exactly. the next morning. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So my first Chaluk episode with you, they said it was a 16 hour shoot. I thought we were filming the entire season in that day. <laughs> I, I was like, this is the entire season, but I only have one dance and the whole season didn't make sense to no, me. So many nothing. moments, so many moments, moments, the most moments you could ever yeah. imagine. No, we have made a moment now. Let's make a moment in the moment. I know. And then the editors, poor things, so you have I to sit on so much. Inceptions, Inception was made from here. <laughs> Let's make a moment in a moment in a moment. And one more moment. It's so funny. And so part of my brain is like, oh man, guys, you just actually, if you just understand exactly what you're going to shoot yeah. and just shoot that, like you're fine. You know, that, that is uh, one thing I also feel at times yeah. because I've, I've done so many reality shows. Right. But at times I do uh, tell them that why aren't we recording what we want? Right. Why are we recording which will say, okay, let's see whether we want to keep it up. Right. You know, why do we need so much of material? I because don't Because anyways, <laughs> uh, if you're shooting for, let's say, 16 hours, what goes out on air? One and a half hours. I know. And they, you know exactly. And I know now doing it for so long, I yeah. can sit there and I go, oh, that's going to be an, oh, that's definitely yeah, not it. It's true, like, true. but you know, but I don't know if they're like, well, we paid for everyone's time. So we're going to take all of it. <laughs> yeah, all of it. You have to sit here and do this. Yeah. But that being said, I do find the shows here in India so much more fun. I just did this Hoonar Baas show. Yeah. And you were brilliant. Uh, thank you. What an act. It was what an act it was. Two days rehearsal. Like yeah, I know that. that. So we were talking that time and I think that time also you were supposed to come. But mm -hmm. she said, no, Manish, I have just two days and I have to prepare for this. You had a live show performance. Right. You landed and after a day you had a performance. Yeah, I know was, people, people are literally like, wait, you haven't been here that long. When did you do this? And I'm yeah. like, I don't know. Have you heard about a thing called jet lag? Because I people in India, it. they go to Dubai and they come back and they say, oh, I have a jet lag here. <laughs> no, if I need to work like a machine, I can work like a machine. And so on that flight over, I knew exactly the 20, in the 24 hour flight, I knew when I needed to sleep, when I needed to stay up and then, okay, I need a little sleep because then I yeah. land in Bombay in the night. And it, so I can work like that machine. It's not the most fun, but if you need to get a job well, done, times, I get that job at times, done. I, I think you have to be like that because the moment I go on stage uh, when I'm backstage people say hi Manish Paul uh -huh. the moment I'm on stage they say hi Machine Paul <gasps> because I'm working like a machine because That's I go tap, 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 tap. Yeah, you, you know, are my a machine <laughs> you are you and couple in that oh we I think that was one of the best seasons ever 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 out of all shows that I have seen around the world, that there was something special Crazy. about it. And I think uh, I think you posted something a few days back. Yeah, also, you know? yeah. Uh, I keep but, doing it because yeah, it's still it's so it special to me. So so good. Yeah. Yeah. I hope we do some work together. Again we soon. will. Yeah. We, we will, will. We will one day. Yeah. But okay, if I talk to you about India, okay. Tell me three things that you love about India, and three things that annoy. 
Can I start with the annoying thing so I can end on a good note? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's a good one. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you can start with that. Um, the horns. Yeah. It says horn, okay, please. And I was just like, no, please. Like, yeah. no. They actually are courteous. They, they, uh, I know. They agree to what say horn, okay, please. So no. then please horn. So yeah. Yeah, cool. no, that, that noise yeah. like really gets to me. I hope we, we, we try and change that. Yeah. yeah. Um, another thing. So I'm from Scottsdale, Arizona mm. in the desert. We have this beautiful blue sky, like yeah. the nicest blue ever. Yeah. And that for a long time, like really weighed on me because of all the pollution here. Yeah. Like if I open up my weather app, it doesn't say fog. It doesn't say smog. It says smoke. Yeah. So not seeing, and I just, I feel bad for everyone for not like getting to see that, you know? So that's two yeah uh three uh i guess i'm just gonna i usually go with whatever comes up to my head yeah. um i think it's the fact that people will be like no no that's not what i meant yeah. no and anytime i hear that no, no. i'm like that's a lie yeah. that's a lie <laughs> just tell me no nah. like yeah, we can, it's okay. we can, yeah yeah Okay, so those um, are the three things which annoy. Yeah. And the three things you love about India. Uh, the work is fantastic. Yeah. The work is fantastic. And everyone loves it. You know, you can just see it on their faces. Yeah. There's so much. There's so much to do. Um, so I love the work here. Um, the fact that like everybody dances here, like yeah. you, you, you don't go up to one auntie, uncle, like anyone and say anyway. dance and they don't. <laughs> you know so like in america it was really sad and like before 2012 when i came yeah. here i was switching from dance to acting because in in the u.s you can't dance and act yeah and i just felt my soul was just so sad yeah. and then i started coming here and instantly on set of abcd i realized that you can't act without dancing because yeah. it's so integrated in yeah. everything True um that. so i mean i'm just like oh man i'm made for this and then my most favorite thing are the people ah, and i don't take this lightly it mm. is it is the most special thing that i've gotten to witness in my life coming from a different country a different um culture everything um i noticed that after my first film i went back to the u.s um i didn't know if i would ever come back um because you did you took a girl from scottsdale yeah. arizona where everything's clean clean i could lick the sidewalk uh, and we shot in the slums here for three mm -hmm. months and so there was a lot of change yeah. that like i just wasn't used to and mm -hmm. and all that and so um and then plus i had a life like yeah. i had this full life in la so i went back and then all of a sudden like an indian family moved in next door uh i started craving indian food yeah. oprah went to india yeah and <laughs> It was just all these things that were coming up. And then one of my co-stars in ABCD, Rahul, mm -hmm. who's a big choreographer yeah. now, um, he kept like, I don't think FaceTime was a thing, but Skyping me or something. Yeah. And there was just something about him. And I see it in everyone here. It's like yeah. no one's really like up here in their analytical mind like we are. They're in their hearts. Yeah. And I just kept like seeing him and, and I told him the other day, he was the choreographer of Hooner Boss to okay. tie all this in here. Uh, and I, I said in front of everybody, I was like, I want you to know if I've never told you, I go, Rahul, you're a huge reason why I'm here and have mm, been here. Because like him this. calling me and just seeing like the type of people that you guys are, I'm like, these are my people. Yeah, I'm nice. Yeah. I'm nice. Lovely, huh, Lauren? I must say, it's been a wonderful, wonderful time I've spent with you. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful chatting with you. Before you uh, go, anything you want to say to all the lovely people out there who've been watching you and listening to you? Um, ooh, instantly just felt really choked up. I guess, thank you so much. <laughs> Lauren. I'm so appreciative. I'm so grateful for so much like love and support like it's been it's been 10 years yeah. i came in 2012 it's 2022 yeah. they've seen my ups they've seen my downs um i still haven't gotten like a huge grasp on the language although it's starting to come more yeah. so <laughs> stay tuned but like through the language barriers they've still accepted mm. me so much yeah. I think a lot of people were very confused on why I left and hopefully a lot of this kind of clears it up a bit, but like I never felt like I lost the support from people. Now Lauren, 
we love you and we are <laughs> happy to have you back and yes we want you to stay here now <laughs> and give us your wonderful work all right yeah woo ah, oh that ah. <laughs> yes big <laughs> boy yes, <people>. yes. <laughs> देखा ये आंसू नहीं ये खुश के आंसू है दोस्तों बट इट वॉज लवली टू हैवी लॉरन एंड थैंक यू सो मच एवरीबडी फॉर ज्वाइनिंग इन अगर आप भी थोड़े इंस्पायर होना चाहते हैं तो ये दोबारा सुनिएगा वो कहते हैं ना यार कभी भी गिरना जो होता है ना वो फिर भी आसान होता है गिर के उठना मुश्किल होता है अब वो मुश्किल को कैसे आसान करना है बहुत बड़ा एग्जाम्पल सामने तो आप भी ध्यान दीजिएगा सी यू सुन टेक केयर बाय